What's up everybody? I'm B True and today we're going to be bringing you some more Yu-Gi-Oh duels. Now last time I made one of these, it was about the one of my favorite playstyle decks and that is the Gishki Ritual Monster deck. I'll leave a, a link in the description down below. Uh, but today I want to show you something that is actually my favorite thing in Yu-Gi-Oh. So basically, uh, when I first started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and when I really kind of started taking it seriously a little bit a long time ago, my favorite and first themed deck, I guess you could say, that I really got into was the Elemental Heroes theme, right? Uh, it was it was so revolutionary at the time. Fusion was around, but it wasn't as good as uh, the Elemental Heroes made it. The Elemental Heroes uh, was such a versatile and flexible deck where all the monsters could fuse together uh, in one way or another in order to make some some sort of a fusion monster. So it was really revolutionary. It was new. It was fresh. It was awesome. And that's what I kind of fell in love with, and I loved the original Elemental Heroes. So I tried making an Elemental Hero deck, and unfortunately uh, it wasn't all that good just because they just they haven't really caught up with uh, some of the new, the new decks that are out there right now. But there are variations. You've got the Destiny Heroes, the Masked Heroes, um, there's, there's a lot of different things that have been added to the whole heroes, so it's not just elemental heroes anymore. Now it's the heroes, uh, sort of, you know, archetype, whatever you want to call it. So this is the most competitive best deck that I have been able to find so far for the heroes, and it combines the elemental heroes with the masked heroes, specifically elemental or uh, masked hero dark law. So masked hero dark law is really good for screwing over your opponent. Uh, by making their cards go to the, be banished instead of going to the graveyard. And also, anytime they add a card to their hand, except in their draw phase, you can randomly banish, uh, not anytime, one time uh, per turn, you can randomly banish one card from their hand. And that ends up screwing over a lot of decks. So, as you can see in the background here, uh, you got some of the combos going on in this deck. And all of this was filmed in a row. Most of these are wins. Uh, this is actually a very strong deck. Because once you get Dark Claw and then uh, totally awesome out onto the field. It's a, uh, a very strong combination. There's a lot of things that you can do with it. <clears throat> so anyway, play style of the deck. Uh, it all focuses and revolves around uh, special summoning Elemental Hero Shadow Mist because whenever you special summon Elemental Hero Shadow Mist, you can search out and add a Mask Change card to your hand. Uh, from your deck, and that allows you to then summon out Dark Law. You can summon out Masked Hero Anki, or also Masked Hero Acid. Those are the three fusion hero. Not well, they're, yeah, they are fusion, but those are the three fusion hero um, or uh, extra deck hero monsters that you have. And then the rest are going to be X Y Z summons, uh, which you can add onto the field in order to uh, to give you even more strength and kind of basically what this deck does is really good at controlling your opponent's side of the field, especially their hand. Um, and, and kind of leaving it with no options. That's what this deck is all about. This deck is all about kind of beating your opponent into submission so that they have no options left. And you're going to see a lot of these, uh, in these duels, I'll actually choose to go first because what I really love about this deck is you're able to get, um, you're able to get L or Mass Hero Dark Law onto the field in your first turn. And so what you can do with that is once you have Dark Law on the field, uh, for their first turn, most decks have a way of searching out a card, uh, you know, obviously in your first draw. So you can immediately, right from turn one, start banishing cards from their hand and put them in a negative uh, situation. Plus, a lot of decks nowadays have uh, you know, ways of getting cards to and from your graveyard. But most of them don't have a way of getting them to and from your banished zone. So another way that this deck really screws people over is they're used to getting cards in and out of their graveyard, whereas... With Dark Law on the field, those cards are now banished, and then they no longer have those combos, and so a lot of people will actually quit um, pretty early into the duel as soon as they see this. So, like I said, this deck is the most competitive of the heroes that I've been able to use so far. Um, so it's, it's my favorite that I've been using. really enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to try and get some footage of the original Elemental Heroes. It's hard because most of them end up being losses just because the originals just aren't quite up to par with the rest but i will do my best to get those anyway if you guys want to see a deck profile of this uh you can skip ahead i'll leave a link in the video so you can just skip straight to the deck profile um but yeah i sped up all these duels so that I, we didn't take forever because i had like 30 minutes worth of duels in this but uh you just really you really just need to see the highlights of how strong the deck is um 
and see how easy it is to get Masked Hero uh, Darklaw on the field, which is actually very easy. With Most of the time, you can get Darklaw on the field in your first turn without a problem. Um, and that is kind of where everything stems from. That's where the strength of this deck stems from. Then once you get Totally Awesome on the field, as well as, uh, I think it's S39, the Utopia, Utopia the Lightning. Once you get those three cards on the field, Dark Law, Totally Awesome, and Utopia the Lightning, you have pretty much uh, won the game. And plus, I run a Vanity's Emptiness so that when I get them on the field, I can then completely lock down my opponent to the part where they, to the point where they can't do anything about it at all. Uh, so that's why I like this this deck. It really works well with my the way that I, I want to play. Um, it has the heroes mentality, which I enjoy. It's not quite the original heroes because the original heroes, as I said. That was what I really fell in love with uh, way before Synchros, way before XYZ. It was the ability to turn a bunch of average, common, not that good monsters um, into these fusion monsters that were amazing. And each one of the fusion monster element or healer heroes had uh, its own way of you know, controlling the field, doing damage. Like they all had their own part. As long as you knew when to use them, you were good. So let's get to the uh, deck profile. Okay, here we go with the profile. So right off the bat, uh, obviously the most important part of this deck is going to be your Dark Law uh, and your Elder Entity Norden and then your Totally Awesome. So we'll get to them in a second, but um, the core of this deck is going to be your Shadow Mist and your Bubble Man with your Mass Change. Uh, so everything in this deck is going to be revolving around getting them onto the field with mass change so that you can start some of your combos. But first off, we got uh, Radian, the multidimensional kaiju. And I have I used to run two of him, but I'm, I'm only going to run one now. And that is, one, if you need a card to discard, which uh, like Twin Twister does. Uh, but two, because some monsters are invulnerable to being like destroyed by battle or a card effect or something like that. But So what you can do is you can tribute some of them uh, this guy onto your opponent's side of the field to get rid of certain monsters that have a problem with sticking around too long. Uh, so that's the, the only reason that I run one of these guys is just, just in case for monsters like that. Next up, uh, we've got Goblinberg. Now, like I said, the, the whole core of this is to get Shadow Mist onto the field special summon so you can pull a mass change into your hand. And that's one of the reasons we've got Goblinberg. So Goblinberg, you summon him. He allows you to then immediately special summon a level 4 or lower monster from your hand. Then you can special summon Shadow Mist. Then you get your mass change. Again, uh, same thing with Tim Goldfish. The exact same uh, uh, effect, basically. Except that this guy is water, which is why we're running three of him and only one of Goblinberg. Uh, we want three water because water with water, and I'll show you in a second, because uh, you need two... Two water monsters for both of these these guys right down here. But obviously three Shadow Mists, very important. Then three Tinbergs. Two Summoner Monks, uh, because we're only allowed to run two, we definitely run three if we could. Because he allows you to discard a spell card and then search out and special summon Shadow Mist from your deck. So these guys let you summon from the hand. These two let you summon from your deck. Three Bubble Mans because we need Bubble Man uh, to get into Acid, and then also because he's the water monster that allows us to get these two guys on the field. Emergency Call in order to pull Elemental Heroes to your hand if you need them. Instant Fusion for Elder Entity Norden. I'll show you why in a second. Uh, a Hero Lives because sometimes you need to be able to uh, to get him onto the field and you don't have any other options. Rageki is just a strong card. Same with Reinforcement of the Army. Because that also allows you to pull uh, Goblinberg, not just your elemental heroes. Two Pot of Desires in case you need to draw cards. Two Dark Holes because they're strong. An Upsar Garland again because it's strong. Mass Charge because it allows you to recycle uh, one hero monster and a your mass change back into your hand from the graveyard after you use them. So that's obviously good. You can get two changes in the in one turn if you play it correctly. Three mass changes, because we need as many of those as possible. Two twin twisters in order to clear off the field a little bit, although we also have uh, mass hero acid for that. A bottomless trap hole and a treacherous trap hole because they're good for clearing off the board for, of uh, monsters, and they also synergize with this trap trick. Raffle Zia, however you want to pronounce that. Vanity's emptiness because you can completely lock down the board if you uh, get a couple of these monsters on the field. And then two Solemn Strikes because, obviously, they're just really good uh, for getting for keeping some monsters off the field. 
Now into the extra deck, which is where the magic happens. First off, we got Masked Hero Anki. Anki uh, allows you to directly attack your opponent, so you can kind of bypass certain walls, even though it only does half the damage, but it's still 1,400 attack every turn. Uh, also, if he destroys an opponent's card by battle, you can add a change card to your hand from your deck. So he allows you to get those, even though we're not going to really be putting Anki on the field as often. Um, mostly it's going to be, we're, we're looking for Dark Law. But we got one hero, Masked Hero Acid, which uh, you use Mask Change with Bubble Man in order to clear out your opponent's back row because he destroys all spell and trap cards your opponent controls, and that's why we're, we would use him. Two Dark Laws because Dark Law really bones people's deck uh, a lot. One, because a lot of decks nowadays have ways of getting cards in and out of your graveyard. So... But they don't have a lot of ways of, of dealing with banished cards. So instead of sending cards to the graveyard, when Dark Law is on the field, your opponent's cards get banished instead. And a lot of the times, that will completely ruin somebody's strategy. And once a specific card gets sent to or gets banished, then they're completely screwed. And I can't tell you how many times people have actually uh, quit because you know a specific card that they really needed got banished instead of sent to the graveyard. Uh, also, he when a lot of decks have ways of searching out cards and bringing them to your hand, and whenever they do that, once per turn, when Dark Law is on the field, you can search a ra or uh, pick a random card in their hand and banish it. So again, you can completely bone them that way as well. Elder Entity Norden for your instant fusions, uh, and I'll show you in a second what, what we're going to do with him. So let, let's actually look at these two right here, specifically Bahamut Shark. So the reason you want three Tin Goldfish and three Bubble Men is so you can get Bahamut Shark on the field. What Bahamut Shark allows you to do is you can detach one XYZ material from this card to special summon uh, these, these guys right here. Totally awesome. Now, totally awesome. Its effect is that uh, when your opponent activates a spell or trap or a monster effect, you can tribute this card off the, of your side of the field. You destroy this card uh, and then negate and destroy your opponent's uh, card. And then if you want to, you can set it on your side of the field. So let's say they activate a dark hole to clear off the field. You can just uh, destroy your totally awesome tribute him negate and destroy your, that, their dark hole, and then you can set their dark hole on your side of the field. So then you have their card then. So it's really, really strong, especially when monster effects get involved. Um, also, uh, here. And, okay, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target a water monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So this card allows you to, cycle, or to recycle water monsters back into... Um, back into your your hand or into your extra deck depending on what what card you decide to use so one of the really good things you can use with elder entity norden is the whole reason you bring him onto the field uh, because he he leaves at the end of the turn so the whole reason you want to bring this guy onto the field is to then special summon either a bubble man or a tin goldfish because then you can immediately because when he is special summoned he allows you to special summon a level four or lower monster in your graveyard so you use Insta Fu Instant Fusion for Norden, and then you Special Summon, let's say, a Bubble Man. And then you XYZ into Bomb Boot Shark, detach one XYZ, and then you XYZ Summon, totally awesome. And now you have a free Negate slash Steal effect, and then whenever this guy is destroyed, you can then pull that XYZ guy back into your hand. You can even pull Norden. So you can, uh, when this, when totally awesome is destroyed... You can then pull Norden back into your extra deck, and then you can instant fusion him back out again, and then get the same effect, and then XYZ into another one of your four-star monsters. So obviously very, very strong. Uh, you can also, with your two water level four water monsters, you can uh, get this guy, Hope Woven Dragon Spider Shark, which is entirely too long of a name, but you can detach one XYZ material from this card. All monsters your opponent controls lose a thousand attack until the end of the turn. Uh, which is very good whenever they have a strong monster on the field because this guy's got 2,600, so they would have to have over about 4,000 attack uh, to survive in a, an attack from this guy on the turn he summoned. Also, when this card is destroyed by battle or a card effect, and so, so basically whenever it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one other monster in our graveyard and special summon it. Um, so it's sort of the same thing as like Totally Awesome. Totally Awesome is sent to the graveyard or, or uh, Hope Woven, super long name guy. Uh, so this, this deck has a lot of ways of recycling your monsters back out onto the field. 
Then we run Utopia so that we can get Utopia the Lightning on the field, who has uh, 5,000 attack, and your opponent can't activate any cards during the battle phase. Castell, because it's a good way of getting a specific card off the field. Gagaga -ga -ga, Samurai. When uh, Once per turn, you can detach one XYZ material from this card and then target a Gagaga -ga -ga monster you control, and it can make a second attack during each battle phase of this turn. Uh, so he can attack twice with this effect. And then also, when another monster you control is targeted for an attack while this card is in attack position, you can change this card to defense position and then change the attack target to this card. Uh, so basically, he's like a, a meat shield whenever you've got one of your other guys on the field. Um, and then Abyss Dweller, just because you've got a lot of water monsters, and then uh, you can increase all water monsters you control gain 500 uh, attack if this guy has an XYZ material that was originally water. So if you use either Tin Goldfish, Elder Entity Norton, or Bubble Man... All the water monsters get an additional 500 attack, so you can give these two, again, even 500 more attack with your Abyss Dweller. Um, you can detach one XYZ material from this card. Any card effects that activate in your opponent's graveyard cannot be activated. You're not going to use this guy a lot because most of the time you'll have a Dark Law on the field, and then uh, they don't have cards in the graveyard, so you don't have to worry about that. But just in case, you know, he's nice to give these guys a little bit extra attack. Finally, Trap Tricks, Raffelsea. Uh, basically, what this this card is for uh, is getting a specific card off the field once it's already on the field. So with this person, what you can do is, let's see here, this card is unaffected by trap effects while it has XYZ material. Trap tricks monsters you control except, and we don't have to worry about that. Your opponent cannot target trap tricks monsters you control except this card with effects. Uh, you don't have to worry about that either. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one. Uh, you can detach one XYZ material from this card and send one whole normal trap card that meets its activation conditions from your deck to the graveyard. And this effect becomes that trap card's effect when it's activated. So that's why we have bottomless trap hole as well as treacherous trap hole. So what you can do is you can put trap tricks on the field. Uh, remove one XYZ material, and then you can either send bottomless trap hole or treacherous trap hole. I forget to say from your from your deck. Yeah, from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, so you can s send one of these two cards from the deck to the graveyard, and then immediately it's only, it's as if you just activated uh, these cards. So this guy is a way to get cards off of the field uh, instantly if you need to. Where if it's like more than 1,500 attack, you can just banish it. Or in this case, you can target two monsters and destroy them. So this is the one that you really want if you don't have any trap cards in the graveyard. So yeah, that is... You saw the strategy with the gameplay already. This is the deck profile. Here are the cards that are in the deck. Uh, and some of what you want to do with them. Some of the ideas and the strategies that you have. Let me know what you guys think about this. If you enjoyed this video or you like this deck at all. Uh, leave a comment down below. If uh, you know if you guys have any questions or anything like that, I'll try and answer them for you. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with all my future videos. Naruto Online, League of Legends, Diablo 3, and now Yu-Gi-Oh! as I'm starting to branch off into more stuff. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching to this point uh, in the video. That's going to be it for me, guys. Have a great day, everybody, and peace.